Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Vincent and this is a video back from 2020 from my Patreon course and I thought it would be also nice to release this to everyone on YouTube because Zach called I Go By Zach also made a really nice continuous tutorial which is based on this Acer product shot. I will link his video in the description where he talks about lights and how to render the thing. My video is split into two parts and I'm just releasing the first one where you learn everything about modeling and how to create this with soft bodies. So enjoy the video and yeah, have a good time. Bye bye. This month we'll talk about how to create your own product shot or how to create your own products. Here are again the end results for the first shot. These two things. And well, first of all, how that started, I took a picture of this Aesop um, face cream. It looks quite filthy in here. I didn't want it to be that used, but I wanted something similar to that. So therefore, we will create the thing actually using soft bodies. So let's go into cinema. So this is my final scene with the whole setup and already all the lights and textures and materials applied. But, well, first of all, I want to start to focus onto the sky. So therefore, I'll just copy it um, into a new scene so I can follow my own steps. And in the scene, I don't need anything. Let's get rid of all the stuff we don't need. So we are now in the new scene and I copied my Aesop facial cream over here. Perfect. So I'll keep this as a reference. And we will directly start from the beginning and so you can follow my process. So first of all, we need a circle and with a radius of like two centimeter or something because it's fairly small. Then I'll put the ASAP guy a little bit more to the left. So the circle is the one at the bottom. Now we need the top part and the top part is going to be a rectangle. And the rectangle is also going to be quite small and we need another orientation. So XZ orientation and we need, so you can see the radius 2, that means the diagonal is 4. So that's why we need 4 here as well. And probably will need to be a bit higher. So cool. That's the first thing. Then what we will need, we'll put everything into a loft. So select them and put it into a loft. So you can see this is the very first step we're doing here. And I'm pressing NB to see my lines. So first of all, this part is too thick. Um, you can see mine is quite thin or when I go back into the image of the original, you can see the top part is very thin. So something like that. Then additionally, it's nice to round the edge, perhaps just a little bit, 0 0.02, and perhaps a little bit more thickness, so 0 0.15. Cool. Then overall, I think we can make this a bit more higher. It doesn't have to be the same thing like here. And overall, this modeling is a bit too long. But yeah, something like that is nice. So then let's try to um, come up with a good mesh because I used soft bodies to create this guy. So when you watch all the previous tutorials, you know that the most important thing about soft bodies is that you have a consistent mesh. Well, first of all, we need more subdivisions and more in V as well. And for example, now this mesh would be already too dense for a soft body simulation, especially at this edge, we will get some problems because there's so, there are so many um, steps. Um, if you are in R23, the instant measure is already built in. I'm now in 22 because not yet everything works in 23. And I bought the quad remesher, it's another remesher. It's really doing a very good job, so I recommend you to buy this guy. But again, you can use instant measure, it's also for free. I assume you will be able to remesh everything, therefore, we can increase all our steps to get to get a better result, like everything is super smooth. Then this is step one: create the loft. So I put this in one, 
object press C and we don't need the selection text. Then let's continue with the loft. So now we have converted our first thing and that's what we got. Then let's try to continue on the bottom part here. For example, I will get rid of the lid and I didn't model it properly. So because the cap is on it, that will be enough for us. So we need some geometry down here and you can press MV. That's the shortcut like M. Wait, it's not showing. V is the extrude inner and we will select the polygon at the top and I'll extrude it to the inside something like that or perhaps a bit oh, a bit bigger yeah then we need another extrude but this time like a normal extrude and the shortcut is MT for that and let's scale this guy a bit down and make it a bit bigger. Overall, this is way too big. So UL is loop selection. And well, I need to select the top part as well. We want everything to be a bit smaller. And also now we can drag it down a bit because you can see we have a bit of a curve from the metal part down here. So mm, I think this is fine, but the cap is still not right. Mm, perhaps a little bit down. Yeah, perhaps something like this could work. Then because we will always keep the lid on, I don't have to worry about this part anymore. And then let's see. Okay, cool. So this is the first thing what we need to do. And now we need to open our remesher and I'm using the quad remesher. It's not a free version. You have to buy it, but it's doing a really great job. Also, it's still way better than the remesher cinema implemented into their R23 version. And uh, they implement implemented the instant measure, which is for free. You can still use it. If you're using an older version, it is doing a decent job, but quadrant measure is the best. So I hope you have access to any of this. Otherwise, I would recommend you to buy this one. So my values are 1700 quads here. And I tested this value. It worked 1600. Worked quite good for me. And I have a symmetry of X and Z. So same here, same here. That's nice. So we have a super clean and nice mesh now. And I would say this is already a high mesh for a soft body simulation. So if your PC is not that strong, you have to work perhaps with a little bit of a lower value. But that's that for now. Then what's next? Well, when I was preparing the tutorial, I directly continued with the simulation and I continued and I continued and at the end I noticed that I don't have UVs. And at this point, well, first of all, it's really important to have UVs for this type because we want to wrap around our design later on. But this time I'm not going to make the mistake, so let's directly start with making UVs. And usually I would use Ryzen UV because it's really kind of nice, but UV edit cinema has a new UV thing. So I think it's quite usable and to unwrap this thing is like very easy. First of all, what you have to know about UV unwrapping. This was a thing which I ignored very long in my career because I was too lazy for it and I didn't really understand where to put cuts and what. So yeah. It's a bit intimidating, but you will get used to it. And also this thing is really easy to unwrap. You just have to think about where can I cut with the scissor to unfold everything and make it a flat paper. So then first of all, we want to cut off the bottom of the thing. So I'll switch to my um, thingy here and I'm pressing UL for loop selection. So this is going to be my first cut. Then 
we need to UV... Wait, sorry. First of all, we need to select everything and then set UV from projection. And the mode doesn't matter here because we will anyway unwrap it. Then I'll switch back in my line mode and this is gonna be my first cut. So we need to go UV yup, unwrap. Nice. So this is the bottom part, this is the top part. Then the next thing what you wanna do is make a loop cut through this. But I don't wanna cut everything. I only wanna cut the right side. So there is also a nice thing in cinema and they made it new I guess. So you can select one one object, uh, one uh, line and at the bottom one line and when you press UL now you can select stop at selection and when I'm pressing shift I have now a selection from the very top left to the bottom. So, well, but actually this is not really good. I want to cut straight through this line. So therefore, let's select again this polygon and this polygon. Yeah. So, selecting again this one and this one and I'm pressing UL. Now I'm having my first top selection and I just press shift to add the selection on the right side. And that's not what we want. I first have to select one um, polygon at the bottom. So I think this was the right one here, hopefully. And if I press UL again, UL, press shift to add the selection. Now I have a perfect cut from top and the side. So then again, we need to UV unwrap and then we can relax the UVs and apply and that's not doing much. Um, packing. Well, first of all, yeah, that's also what we need. Pack the UVs and relax is not doing anything. Well, I think in the new version you can also see how much and the UVs are distorted, like something you can instantly see in Ryzen. But I think our distortion is good and Overall, that's already it's it, so we wouldn't need to do anything more. That's our unwrapped UV. Nice. So, little basic, basic excursion. No, how do you say? Uh, basic tour in UV unwrapping. Nice. So, just a quick check. I have a standard material and I only have to color my UV checker and then I'm going into the materials. You can press N Q to see how your flow of the material is running. And you can see the back part has this distorted UVs. They are drifting down here, but um, I would say just ignore it and always keep this side from the object. So, therefore, let's rotate our guy 180 degrees. And that's our front now. Cool. Then I would recommend you to copy the object, like always copy the object in each step. And I usually create a null and call it original and hide the null. So if you fuck something up, you can always go back to the file and grab the thing and work with it. And especially working with soft body things can tend to go weird. So then we got that, which is quite nice. The love we don't need, the original one. So 
What next? Next thing we need to have vertex, vertex maps. So therefore, again, I am, now wait, we can do that more easy. I'll go into my front view and I will select all the polygons from the bottom. Let me think. Um, we will select one more row. So this part of the tube is going to be quite stiff. I mean, this one already has like a dent in here or like a, I don't know how to say that. Somehow my English is broken today. Uh, sorry for that. So this part is stiff. The other one can be soft. So then I will select my object and I'm pressing shift C and I'm typing set vertex vertex weight and my weight is 100% nice so then the next thing we want to do we want to smooth our vertex a little bit therefore you can double click into your tag here and instead of um, absolute we can select smooth and I already want to smooth a little bit more like 5 and I'm applying and nothing is happening let's select the object and I'm selecting all vertices and let's um, press apply again and now it works and perhaps again so we get a smooth transition this part is very stiff and the rest of the part can be affected so I think this looks nice we have got some great transition then what we need we need soft bodies so soft body soft body always soft body and just one thing, always save your file before doing anything with soft bodies. So this is already month 16. Wow, that's a lot. So animation 0.1. Cool. Then we need a turbulence. And let's make the turbulence very small and I don't want the object to fly around I just want the deformation so I want it to always stay at the position of the rotation and now let's press play it's super slow and there is an interesting thing happening you can see everything is kind of exploding and that's because my scene scale is wrong in this um, as uh, seen a uh, file so when you are having this strange issues it's mostly because your dynamic settings are wrong so i'm pressing command d or, or control d to get into dynamic settings and in general of course i don't have gravity and in the expert i still have 0.2 which is quite big because this is like mostly original scale modeled and the thing is very small so 0.2 is quite a lot so we would not need 0 0.0, I don't know, 2 perhaps. If I press play now, you can see it's not exploding anymore. That's the first thing which is very important. Then what do we need? Let's work our soft bodies. So first of all, we need mm, perhaps 30 of stiffness. And now if I press play, everything is stiff. That's not what we want. We want our vertex map driving the stiffness so you can see now the top of the part is going to be deformed a lot but the bottom part is nearly not deformed perhaps it can be deformed a little bit more 25 this looks good then in general the object is moving a bit too much around i would say so let's increase the strength of the follow position and follow rotation also the turbulent scale is too big because this is so small we can work with a very small value so perhaps even smaller like one or two two was better cool so then this looks very squishy squishy and not exactly how we want it so how do you want to achieve that therefore we need to think about our values so mm, the overall shape of this object 
should be able to transform. So we need to drop down a structural that will try to remain the overall um, like shape. Then we need to... I'm always con get confused with which spring does what, but one spring spring should be very strong in this case and one should be very loose so let's try 1001 and that word was the wrong so one and one two three one and one thousand oh wait was it right no no sorry the previous one was right one two three and one so then I will put out a lot of the dampening so everything goes a bit quicker. And let's see. Well, first of all, the turbulence is way too strong. Let's drop it down to 3 perhaps. Let's see. Okay. That's already quite nice. And you can see now because one string has a lot of power and the other one has nearly no power, we get these sharp folded edges. And that's exactly what we want in this type of um, simulation. So, but this guy is... Mm, well, we get some intersection from the object itself. I didn't have that in my previous version. So let's try to play around with the values a little bit. And let's drop that down to 0 0.01. And also I will drop the scale to one centimeter. And let's see if that, that actually already helped. So I think the scale, if you leave it at default, which is 100, then the simulation is not accurate enough and we have some intersections there there and this object is like a few centimeters high let's actually try it with five that's probably the um, thing yeah this looks also very good but yeah one was perfect nice and we don't need so many sub steps because the thing is quite easy to simulate then let's see, what do we want? Um, first of all, I think it's too much of a turbulence. And what we can also do is make a negative pressure of minus 0 0.2. So the tube gets sucked out itself. And perhaps the stiffness can go a little bit more up. Yeah. Nice. So I would say this is already like a really cool shape. And the very nice approach from this design is that we can work very procedural. So at this point I can create like a hundred different um, of these creams, tubes. Oh man, sorry, my English today. Um, cool. I could have modeled it by hand with the sculpting tool but this is way more intuitive. And I think it's a really nice workflow. Go all the steps. And then I'm reducing my timeline to like 40 frames. Then you need to cache your simulation when you're happy. So first of all, again, I'm copying my file. And in the original folder, it's important that you untick your dynamics, otherwise they will react with, with each other. So we don't want that. And let's perhaps have some final tweaks on the look of this guy. So perhaps we say the overall shape should remain a little bit more. So the structural is that. I'm trying 75, so it tries to remain a bit more like it was. And yeah, I would say this is really cool. Then next thing you need to do, you need to go to the cache, go to frame zero, bake all, and then go to the frame which you think is the perfect one for you. Like, I don't know, you want a little bit of deformation. I would say most clients are like not that deformed. So 
something in the middle, but I like the deformation, so I'll go with the drastic one. Then you just have to delete your tag. And that's it. So this guy I really like. We will continue with this guy later, but let's hide this guy for now on the original and I'll put back on my simulated one and put back on the dynamics and have a look again at our weight from the vertex map and have a look at my image. So, wait, do you have more images? Well, I have the thing in front of me and there is a little fold on the very top and it also feels like the very thin part here kind of could get some some stiffness so therefore we will paint some of that in there uh, painting we don't want smooth we want add and let's add the top row and from the back as well and yeah so let's see what's happening now well first of all we need to delete the cache Otherwise, nothing will happen. Because I want to make a fold from the top. And therefore, it's good when the folding, the folded thing kind of remains the same. But let's see if we can find some values for this guy, what we like. Overall, I would say everything can deform a little bit more from the stiffness, like not too much. Perhaps the object itself can bend a bit more and we will drop really the flexion down to one to even increase more of these creases and folds. And again also a few more frames to see what's happening. So a little bit of deformation. I would say this looks very nice. Perhaps, perhaps we could have smoothed a bit more from the stiffness here. Or also let's get rid of the negative pressure. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, I would say this is better. It still looks a bit more um, with more inside. Though it's ASOP and it's super expensive and there's nearly nothing inside. But let's bake the fancy guy. Go to a frame what we like, and again I will take something with distortion. Mm, yeah, this one. So delete the guy. But well, first of all, let's also put that back into the original folder and turn it off and delete this guy. And now we have another object. Then. Let's see. Wait, sorry, wrong one. That's the one. So we have now two different tubes. And I want to continue to work with this guy. So therefore now let's hide again this one and let's drag that more to the side. So I was talking about the fold in the top. Therefore, we need just to do a little bit of modeling, it, nothing fancy. Also, I'm not the best modeler, so don't worry about that. I have selected the top part with UL. Now I'm pressing UF for fill, so I can fill the top. Then, what do we want? First of all, I think it's a bit too thick. So it's nice if it's squished more down and it is, of course, way higher. So then we want a loop selection from our lines. And I'm pressing T for scale and I want everything to be a bit more even. It doesn't have to be 100%, but the line should be quite even. And I'm doing the same with the top part of this thing, so therefore I'm switching my view to the front 
and I will go and select the top part, press T and I'm scaling everything down like quite a lot so we don't have much of a distortion and actually this guy can still go a bit more thin yes but again I think we need it to be a bit higher because we will fold it in a second so going back there and let's scale this guy up and yeah that's nice so then we need more cuts and I press KL for the knife and I will add myself uh, four four that's the guy and I would say let's press save let's continue first of all on this guy and we want to have a sub su subdivision surface to make everything smooth so that's how it looks for now and that is too smooth everywhere so we need to add more cuts therefore I will go to my um, my lines and my cutting tool I'm on the loop cutting tool and I want to add a cut to this edge so that this edge is, will stay sharp and this edge so we have two sharp edges now you see that's how it looks now and actually this edge is quite sharp on my um, original one so I will add another cut so you can see we are super sharp now here that looks nice and we definitely need to add some cuts to the top because it's so smoothed out here and let's see first of all I will also add a cut to the edge so this one will sharp be sharpened and oh I want to have a cut to the outer edge so I will cut make a loop cut at the out of the bottom uh, of the package so I have more lines here and let's see what that did yeah that is already way better um, but I feel this top Powered is also still too smooth. Let's add one additional cut to to the to, to do to do to the side here on the top. Nice. And let's see again. And no, this was the wrong one. I want the top part to be sharp. So one cut here. And let's see. Nice. So, 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 that's the guy. And it looks alright-ish, but I say the one before was a bit nicer. I think this part got too small somehow. This part is a bit too fat. But you could manually, of course, work on that, so I will just deform my original object like a little bit make it a bit more slim in the center and yeah that's already it for this guy so let's say I'm happy with this one and let's have a look at the second one because I want to show you something different on this guy 
So we need to repeat the process of making everything sharp. So KL for loop cut. So the good thing is we know where to cut. We want these two edges to be sharp. We need sharp edge down here. And I want a sharp edge at the top. So cool. But we will also do something different with this guy. I will switch to my sculpting, sculpt, sculpt, sculpting workout work layout. And I really nearly never use sculpting, but this could be a nice thing to have a look here. So I will subdivide everything three times. And we have round about the same subdivision level as the one on the left. And now you could like manually work on this guy if, for example, you want to emphasize some parts. For example, I think the uh, these things like the punches here or the holes or how you call it, they feel a bit more sharp. Though here everything is a bit more smooth. Actually the one also I made before is a bit better but we can easily like emphasize this effect with the sculpting thing. So therefore you will just need to select pinch and I want to pinch everything. So, so you see what I'm doing there. Just a little bit of pinching here and some pinching here. And a bit here, some here. No, this was already too much. Mm, let's say at this edge we want a bit of pinching in here and... Wait. Yeah. And perhaps also here. Though the back side won't be that visible. And now what we also could do is have a look at this guy, for example, we, to um, copy this part. I don't want it to be that strong because it should be more like a beauty shot. So normally these packages are like new. But I will make some little imperfections and thingy in here. And let's grab this part and move it a bit more to there. And yeah, so this is a very um, like hand way to finalize or art direct your scene, your object, if you really have to have something very specific. But Overall, I like the procedural approach way more. So let's go back to my startup layout. And then as a last thing, we need to do the cap. We need a cylinder. And it should be quite small. And let's work with this guy. So I will call this cap and just put it into it and press piece R. So the object itself is in the center of my A sub thingy. Perfect. Let's just roughly try to find the right scale. Then we need, of course, more segments. And I just use a deformer, a taper deformer, put that into the cap, fit to parent, zero of curvature, and it's the wrong way. So we just need to rotate our taper effect 180 degrees. And let's have a look. Mm, I think that's nice. 
perhaps a bit smaller and a bit higher and a bit more down and taper effect yeah I think this looks nice so now I've converted the cap and we kind of need to do the same as before so I'm selecting the top cap and I'm pressing MV for in extrude and let's say the cap is quite thin something like that MT for the null extrude and I will extrude the thing down then reactivate the taper again and we don't have any bevel yet so therefore we will add a bevel and point point zero point zero one with three subdivisions and yeah I think this is perfect let's drag this guy back I'm scaling it a bit more up so it fits better and I think this looks cool yes then what we can do, let's have a quick check on to our UVs. Looks all nice and at the guy on the left is quite, ah oh yeah, he was the wrong way, but the failed unwrap, but this part is all right. So what else would we need to do? We would want to prepare our selection for rendering later and we can easily do that by UL again and UF for fill so I'm having my bottom selection which is gonna be aluminium and therefore I'll press shift, shift C and set selection set selection and this is gonna be my aluminium for later and Let's also do that onto this guy, UL and UF, nice, so we have the selection now here to the other one and I'm doing the same again, set selection and also on this guy we have now an aluminium selection, perfect, so that would be part one.